Hey, this is Andrew Brown, and we are looking still at service, but for the last type, which is external name. So what I want you to do is create a new file here. We'll type in service external name, YAML. Okay, and we'll open up that file and make our way over back to our service Kubernetes page that I hopefully you still have open, and we'll type an external name at the top. You can just search it, Command F to do that. And here is that example there. So we'll go ahead and copy that code in. And so the idea behind external name is is that you have a service that is able to communicate or talk to something outside of your cluster. So maybe you have a database that you're using, like you're using on uh, AWS RDS, which is a relational database. And so if you had spun up a relational database, it takes forever to spin one up, so I'm not gonna do it, but it would have like a host name, like a domain name that you could use because you can't, um, you can't uh, get a, an IP address from RDS. It'll only give you a host name, like a domain name. And so uh, this allows you to say, okay, uh, I'll have my database here. And so whenever the service is hit, uh, always send it over to that database, okay? So what I'm gonna do is maybe we can try it with a virtual machine because that might be a little bit easier. It will have a host name. I don't know if it'll work, but let's try anyway, okay? And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and create myself a new EC2 instance. And so we'll go ahead and launch an instance and we'll give it a moment here. We'll say launch instance here. I don't know why it didn't take. And so the idea is I want to launch a new machine. So let's say Amazon X2. And I know so we're doing it with the old experience just in case it's the future and you don't have the old view. I'm gonna do the new view, even though this might change. But the idea is that we need a web server. So I'm gonna call this Apache uh, web server. And we want it to be Amazon X2. I really do not like this, but this is how it is. And it's gonna be an Amazon X2 instance. It's gonna be 64 bit architecture x86. Uh, T2 micro is totally fine. We do not need to log into the server, so proceed without a key pair. And we need to have, um, let's see here, allow SSH traffic. We do not care about SSH traffic, but we do want HTTP, so that's totally fine because we want it to be open on port uh, 80. And then down below, the storage is fine. And then we've got to go to advanced details. And this is where we are going to uh, go all the way to the bottom. This is all new to me too, so I'm a bit confused. And this is where we're gonna enter our user data. So what I want to do is install a Apache server. I've done this a lot of times, but I, I can't remember. So what I'm gonna do is just go to a GitHub and go to exam pro co, because I probably have an example because I've done it so many times. We'll go here and I'm just gonna search, um, probably in Terraform I've done it. Like there's an Avis Apache example. So this actually, this example probably would have it. Uh, if we go to the user data YAML, those are the two commands we want. Okay, so I'm gonna copy these over and technically this is a bash script. So we're gonna just take this out here. Whoops. Um, I don't know if I have confidence in that. I'm gonna go back and maybe we've done it in the solutions architect. Uh, solution free the free I have a bunch of free repos here that should show up so let's take a look at uh, we'll open the developer I know it's somewhere in here maybe it's in the cloud practitioner the cloud practitioner is I think pretty much updated here um, we'll try VPC follow along is it in here no and we have this one that one's I don't see it in here maybe it's in the developer I'm just looking for that file. I know I have it somewhere here. User data.sh. Yeah, that looks kind of right to me. Yeah, this this one's right. So this one, what this will do is it will, um, we don't need the EC2 user here, but it's gonna install Apache, which is called HTTPD. I know it's confusing. And here it can actually create a custom file and then start it up. So this is at the free AWS developer associate. I do have a repository for uh, the project we're working on. So it will be in there as well. So if we go back over to exam pro here, um, I'm just updating as I make the course here, so it's not completely uh, completed here, but I have this repository here. I don't know why it's blank <laughs> because I definitely uh, committed code to this the other day, but that's fine. This will get filled out and we'll have examples there, okay? But for the time being, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this on in here and we'll paste this in. And I don't need all this content. All I want here is to, um, I need this line so that it knows that it's doing bash. 
Okay, and so we have sudo yum install Apache, sudo yum, or sorry, sudo uh, systemctl, so start up Apache, and if the server needs to be restarted, make sure that it's there. And so that should be enough to do it. And so what I'll do is go ahead and launch this instance, and we'll just wait for that to work there, okay? And so we'll go view all instances. And so I'm waiting for this to be running. And so the idea is that we have this, we have the public IPv4 address, but that's not what I want. I want the the DNS name, okay? So like this is the idea where it's like kind of like a name, domain name or something. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and copy this and go back to our micro K8s here. I'm gonna just paste that on in here. And I'm gonna call this um, service Apache. And here they have a namespace. I'm gonna take that out because I want it to be in the default namespace. I don't want that to go anywhere strange. And down below here, we have something funny, so I'm just gonna type in clear. And we'll go back over to our EC2 instance. We're gonna refresh here and see that it is running. I'm gonna grab the public IPv4 and just make sure that it works. Okay, so see how it's hanging? If it's hanging, it's either Apache's not running or the port is not open. Oh no, it works. Okay, we just had to wait for it to pass. So when you have an EC2 instance, it has to be running and then the status checks have to pass. We refresh here. Well, it, it's working, but usually you wait till the, you get two out of two, but we're impatient here and we're just getting ahead of ourselves. So it does work at this address. And so the idea is um, we are gonna, we pasted that into here. And so I'm hoping that this will have an IP address or something, and then we will just curl it or wget it. And hopefully we'll get the contents of this page. So now that we have this um, external service, we're gonna type in micro K8s, cube CTL, apply hyphen F, K8S, uh, service uh, external name YAML. Okay. And then we will type in micro K8S, cube CTL, uh, get SVC to see what services we have here. And notice that this one actually has an external IP address. Now, if we got the load balancer to work in the last one, which was, uh, not ready for that yet, it would have had an external IP address where it would have showed that address so that, you know, um, for the load balancer to connect to. But here we can see that this external name uh, doesn't have a cluster IP address, but it points to external IP. So I guess my thought is like, okay, I guess the other services would just resolve to this one if it knew how. So I'm just trying to think here because it is external. So what I'm gonna do is I want to log into the, the, the our BusyBox pod here just to see what we can see. Okay, so we'll say wget uh, clear. And I just wanna do like a wget on Google here.com. Yeah, that's external. So I'm not really sure. I mean, I understand why we have one, but I don't understand the use case. So I'll be back here in a moment. I just wanna to try to find the reason why, okay? Um, like. Like, what can we test to make sure that this is working as expected? Because I know if we do a wget here, this this is gonna work, right? We do wget. Oh, this is 403 or forbidden. Um, is the port not open? Oh, it actually is forbidden. Yeah, so I wonder why we're getting a 403 on that. Hmm, type an exit here. What if I do a curl on this? No, that works here. Huh. So we got a 403 forbidden. Okay, well, I'll look into it and I'll be back in a moment, okay? All right, so I did a little bit of reading and it says, when looking up the host name, so whatever it's called, the cluster DNS service returns a CNAME record with the value to that. So it sounds like that we will have a um, an address here. And so what we'll do is we will go here and type in micro K8S cube CTL um, and we'll say describe SVC, and this one's called service external name. And maybe we'll be able to see that information because that's what I don't know. Um, and so I must be, must be typing this wrong. So we'll type in uh, get SVC for services. Oh, it's called service Apache. We'll see if we get some more information here. And so if we scroll on up here, we have this here. So what I'm trying to understand is how do we get this? So when looking up the host, because I don't know if this is always just based on this pattern here, okay? 
So we have my service prod. So I assume that this is the namespace. So we're in the default namespace. And our service is called service.apache or hyphen Apache. SVC, because it's a service, it's in our cluster, it's local. And so this is what I want to know. So we do curl, could not resolve. So I mean, I understand what it's saying here, but I don't know uh, what to do with this. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna find out next, okay? All right, so after a little bit of digging on Kubernetes, we have debugging DNS resolution. So I think this would be the way that we would figure it out. But there are a few things here that it says that might not work well. So you have to have a Kubernetes cluster, a kubectl, is recommended to run this uh, with at least two nodes and that you're not acting as the control plane host. So if you do not already have a cluster, you can create one by using Minikube. So the thing is, is that there is only a single node. So I'm not sure if we can just spin up another node. Um, and everything I think is just one node because we're not running multi nodes. It's a single, it's a single one there. So uh, I guess what we can do is we can try to launch this pod here. So this is a DNS utility. And so what they're doing is they're using this and then they're doing an NS lookup, right? And so I don't know if I can do that from the C2 instance, but um, this is what I would give as an attempt. Even if this doesn't work, that's totally fine. Uh, it's, we're kind of going way out of the scope uh, for the actual KCNA. But if this if we can't get this to work, I figured it doesn't hurt to try, right? So what we'll do is we'll go back over here, and uh, this is DNS utils. So I'm going to go back over to this here, and we'll make a new file here. I'll call it dnsutils.yaml, and I'm going to go ahead and copy the contents here. And we'll go ahead and paste this in. So it will launch a pod, so it's not a deployment, it's just a pod, DS new tills, um, and here it's pulling a very specific image. So it says end-to-end uh, -end test image, Jesse, I don't know who Jesse is, but thank you, Jesse, DNS utils 1.3, and then it has a sleep and 3,600. So the first thing it does when it launches is it sleeps, pull if not present, so pull once, restart policy, so always restart this pod. Okay, so we'll go back to the debugging here. And here we can see that it gets deployed. In fact, it looks like we don't even need to have this file here. We could just hold on here. We haven't we haven't done an external file, so I'm going to go and delete this here. Whoops. And we'll just actually copy this if because if it does that, that's even easier, right? And I'm going to type in clear. And what we'll do is go over here, hit enter. Next to the server was refused. Um, micro K eights. We'll be doing that all day here. So it's created that DNS util. And so if we go back over to this here, we should be able to do a lookup. So I'm gonna leave whatever the default is. Actually, we'll look up the pod first to make sure that it does exist and get some descriptions here. I'm not sure if we'll find any inf uh, interesting information about the pod, but let's just do it because they're doing it too. Right, so there's the pod. We know that it's working. And if we go back over to uh, the debug page here, we're gonna go ahead and copy this. Now this is for Kubernetes default, so this should show us something, right? That's not for the service that we're looking for, but we'll go ahead and paste that on in there. Uh, again, micro K8S in the front there. If you're wondering how like I'm jumping to the front there, I'm actually hitting control A. Okay, so control E. Oh, well, it's not doing what I want, but control A would jump to the, the, the back, control E would jump to the front, but control E is overridden by this file command here. So we'll type in micro K eights, hit enter. And so notice that it is resolving here. So we have the server and it's going there. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to delete this out. And we have this. So this is what I'm going to try. See if this resolves anywhere. Aha, and it does. And look what it returns. Our EC2, 52, 201, 234, 50, compute one, amazonadvis.com. And there's the IP address. So that looks like that is our server. Um, so the core DNS, the DNS uh, thing that is uh, part of the control plane is definitely resolving to there. So that is absolutely working. How that works in the app, like how we would use that within the app, I don't know but that's great to see that that works. So I just wanted to make sure that we had a way to validate there. So what we'll do is go back to our EC2 instance and shut this down. So we'll terminate this one here. Okay. And we do not need um, uh, 
the that service run anymore for debugging. So I'm going to go and type in micro k8 cube ctl get pods because I can't remember the name, and we'll just hit up here. We'll say delete pod DNS utils, and that pod will vanish because there is no deployment, so there's nothing that will persist it there. And so I think we pretty much covered everything I wanted to cover with um, the service types because there's the four types. And if we have an opportunity to test the load balancer later, we will do that. Um, but we're definitely going above and beyond. And I'm hoping that this really uh, solidifies your knowledge of Kubernetes. Um, and I'll see you in the next follow along, okay?